What's up, sweaties? You're watching Collider Heroes. I'm John Schnev. This is episode 136. We are back. It's Monday. We're rocking this daily, everyday Collider Heroes. With me, Robert Meyer Burnett. What's up, man? Uh, I'm doing great. You know, I watched Chad Bozeman and Message to the King or Message nice. from the King on Netflix, and man, it made me excited for Black Panther. That man is a, a penultimate actor, is he not? So good. It's very tasty. You know what else? We got Amy Dallin. What's up? Hello. Happy to be back. Yeah. We're going to get into some news. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about cable. That's right. We've seen now we've seen Josh Brolin. We knew that picture was coming. We've got a whole bunch of amazing picks dropping from Deadpool. Last week we had uh, Zazie Beats. Yes, that's her name. I love that name. And I love the way they they gave that look uh, for Domino. It's a very unique and original take on the Domino outfit. They almost kind of inverted her and gave her, you know, this this cool new look. And then we've got Cable where he's looking very much Ex almost exactly like what I hoped the Josh Brolin cable would look like. I mean, a couple of people were saying they kind of commandoed him up. He's looking a little more Arnold. But uh, at the same time, that's a, that's the kind of cable that I want in this universe. He's not going to be like, you know, Liefeld had those like giant shoulder pads and the massive super giant gun. <laughs> it's not going to look like that. This is like the realistic version of cable. Amy, that what are your thoughts? That doesn't qualify as a giant gun to you? No, it is, but that's yeah, not a light bulb gun. It's not the, you know, I am, you know, whoa, it's, yeah, it's a big gun. It's not a Final Fantasy sword yes. size gun. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's cable. That's a picture of cable. Yes. Like that's the, the amazing thing to me is it's like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I see that arm. I see that techno organic virus being kept right. in check. Um, uh, but like at the same time, I'm really excited. This take on Domino is so recognizably Domino, but completely unexpected. And that's just a cool thing to nail. So I'm totally. really happy with both of these. I agree. It looks like a birthmark. You know, well, like it's, it's, it's a natural. skin disorder. Yeah, you know, I love yeah, that. I, I think, think that's, that's a great. great way to go. And by the way, there's something incredibly sexy about that being natural as opposed to, look, I was a big fan of Spider-Man having natural web shooters. Yeah. Like that was a mutation. I mean, I thought, you know, just like everything else about Spider-Man, and I never understood why why that wasn't cool. I mean, because well, Peter Parker didn't make them. And I'm like, yeah, but it makes the biting from the spider right. more it's out transformational out yes I'm, it makes absolutely team he invented them i like no, it. i know i know I, I understand that but but i thought it worked well like and i think that this idea that her domino spot like in the comics i was always thinking to myself when i first met domino what new mutants when she right. was I'm like what does she put that on her face <laughs> you know i know it's part of a costume right. it makes more sense that you've got this attractive woman who has this interesting anomaly yeah. that, that's cool and it looks i think it looks really sexy it's, i don't know it's very sexy i mean if your name is zazzy beats you know you're already kind of sexy <laughs> right it's like oh, right now she's rocking this cool this cool look i think D domino looks really cool and different from the comic book and cable looks really cool and very similar to the comic books so i think yeah you know, i mean look he's just wearing can he's wearing military fatigues which makes sense because he's a real guy and not a four color comic book character right. and if you're going to look for a translation that's that's a great way to do it i mean look at his arm also this is the fox first so they're not going to be wearing bright colors most of the time no right and except deadpool wearing his red yeah. which is great but look at he still has all the bandoliers and straps oh, yeah, that life a lot of buckles a lot but of they buckles. look real a lot of yeah. buckles i love that you know where Liefeld got those buckles swat he told me i was like wow what's up with all the buckles and you know things he's like just... the, the pouches he's like the swat movie and that's when it clicked with me i was like that's so awesome. That makes total sense. He was yep. like, where are people putting all the ammunition? They got to have those pouches. I was like, all right, man. I'm, I'm with the pouches now. You know who's always now. got granola bars on him? Cable. That's right. Always got a granola bar because he's got them pouches. <laughs> um, Lalandra, we haven't seen what she's going to officially look like yet, but, I mean, if she's in any way close to what Hella looks like, like Kate Blanchett when they announced Hella, and then when I finally saw it, I was like, Oh my God! It just it like as being a comic nerd and seeing Hella come to life, transformational. I can't wait to see. I hope that they do stick close to the landing with Lalandra because that character has such a beautiful and alien look with that very very unique hair shape and everything. What are your guys' thoughts on Jessica Chastain now officially playing Lalandra? What do you think she's going to look like? I'll start with you, Amy. Well, I love what you've said, which is that I hope if they're, you know, I want all of these people to do their own thing and not be too worried about what other people do. But if you get inspired by, let's say, the very risky choice to have Hella have her enormous crazy headgear and be like, yeah, they nailed it. I hope that that inspires the people working on this to be like, we can do that. 
we can take chances and yeah. have it look really, really cool because some version of that headdress, uh, like there are a lot of ways you can go with it because since it's drawn on the page, it's sort of unclear what it is and how you make it, which means you get a lot of freedom in how you execute that. Right. Um, but I hope that that's what they're looking to, to be like, let's hit that mark. Robert? Oh, I agree with you. I, I mean, she's so distinctive as a character. And it was one of those things when you first see her, like when I was first reading X-Men, you're like, you do say, what is that? Like, is that her hair? Is she wearing like some Egyptian? Is it a hat? Are they feathers? Is, is it, it like the hair? helmet like... from Battlestar Galactica right. that looked like a pharaoh's, the first one from the first series? I totally. mean, what is that? And, and I think the fact that Jessica Chastain is a redhead, I'm a big fan of redheads. Mm -hmm. It's one of my things. <laughs> I don't want them to obscure her red hair, right? <laughs> but I could see that happening, you know, to make it darker, to 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 go for that look. But I think the fact that they're embracing, I mean, the X Men have been so even Ap Apocalypse was the first time where they pushed the design elements mm -hmm. further than they've ever gone. They embraced more of the comic book sure. look to the costume. Psylocke had her purple costume, and mm -hmm. then everybody else was more colorful. And Apocalypse yep. himself was. Was pretty redolent of the of the uh, of the character. Play, like I I bagged on it earlier. They are moving in that direction. Now. Yes. right. And I I think now that you've got people from space right. and having Guardians of the Galaxy being a cue, and now I think Thor Ragnarok. I, I like seeing this new. Let's put color in these movies. Let's yes. make them look crazy, weird, and alien. Because that's what I want to see. I want to see. Look, the Shi'ar. Those characters are very colorful and diverse and big and small yep. and i want to see that yeah i want to see know? gladiator with this giant weird mohawk right and a weird yeah. red and blue outfit yes. i want to see that so hopefully we're going to see that you know ian mcshane was just recently announced last week he's in hellboy the brand new hellboy movie starring david harbour as hellboy he's playing broom so he's taking over the john hurt role from the uh guillermo uh movies what are your guys thought about anytime you add i'll just say anytime you sprinkle in ian mcshane that's just flavor that's instantly like you just made the movie that much better i don't care what the movie is you add ian mcshane it just became i might see that it didn't even matter what it is now i'm interested i hellboy already had the blood queen already had my interest i love the character hellboy i love the mike mcnola series i'm in i was in to see the hellboy trilogy that they're not doing I'm in to see the reboot. Amy, what are your thoughts about McShane? I can't really add to that. You kind of nailed it. Like, it's Hellboy, but with Ian McShane. And you're like, <laughs> right. well, I was already in, but now I guess I'm buying two tickets. Right. Like yeah, good casting, Robert. Well, I, I was going to say both of these roles are incredibly... I mean, look at, the, <laughs> look at him. He looks like Hellboy the same way that Ron Perlman did. And, totally. I, and I think what's, what I really like about these, th this new incarnation of, of the comic book realm that we now live in, comic book movie realm, is... The casting is important. You know, I was on a show once with Stan Lee back in the 90s where he said it didn't matter who played Spider-Man because he's in a costume the whole time. And I was like, Stan, right. no, because it's who's Do playing... Do yourself some justice, man. Yeah, it's yeah. like who's character. playing Peter Parker. I mean, that's... And they the, the casting across the board on these comic book films has been pretty outstanding for the last 10 years since the right. MCU. And now we're getting non-MCU movies that are doing the same thing. And I it just excites me to know that... that we can get these actors, actors of this ilk. Like, I love William Hurt mm -hmm. and seeing him playing Thunderbolt Ross. I mean, it's kind of, come on. I yeah. mean, really? He's great. And Robert Redford, <laughs> you know, is really the head of Hydra. You right. know, like, come on. This is the, we live in a golden age, people. A golden age. Kate Blanchett. As yeah. Hella. I mean, that's what I mean. I think as, as, as more and more roles got announced in these Marvel movies, especially with Robert Redford, a lot of other actors were like, wait a minute, Redford's doing this? I think that kind of woke up some of those higher tier actors to like, look, you can be, you're in plays. You can do, this is just a modern play. It's just like, have some fun. We need that flavor. We need, we need a good actor to inhabit this role. So, well, you know, Kate Blanchett can go do an Oscar nominated performance for Woody Allen, like Blue Jasmine. Right. But of course, she's coming off of being Galadriel, and then she's going to be Hella. And who doesn't love Kate Blanchett? Is one of those actors, actresses sure. that everyone just you just love her. Yeah, her and Tilda like, Swinton, they can do no wrong. So, can do no wrong. Uh, let's move on to uh, an actress who also can do no wrong, and she's playing Captain Marvel. We've got some amazing news recently that Marvel and the Kree are going to be showing up in the Captain Marvel film. So. I mean, look, I mean, the website rumor had said maybe Captain Marvel is going to be showing up the original Captain Marvel. And you see that outfit from some of that concept art. That's definitely Cree 
uh, armor. I mean, if you were like, if you were a nerd and you're like, mm, the Skrulls and the Kree, I believe the Skrulls and the Kree are going to be fighting, and that's going to be the Captain Marvel film. Also heard she might, Carol Danvers might actually have her original suit before she gets the more military style suit. Let me start again so, with you, Amy. Just to separate out our information. Yeah. This is the real art, so we feel pretty good about the like definitely yes. Skrulls, yes. almost certainly Kree. Yes. Um, the rest were in the territory of sort of rumors, but yes. like pretty plausible rumors. Yeah. Uh, and that would be, it would be, I, I will be happy if uh, Marvel makes some kind of appearance in this. We've talked before about how probably the way to use him is sort of in an Abin Sur like yep. disappearing mentor right. kind of capacity, which yeah. would mirror their real history. Uh, whether or not he will have actually taken the name Captain Marvel or be named Marvel and give her the name in that way, uh, it doesn't hurt to have, like, it's a weird in universe justification for the name, but like, it doesn't hurt to have that. Right. Um, and just introduce movie audiences to the concept that this Andy alien is randomly named Marvel. Look, it happens, I guess, with aliens. Right. Uh, I, I think this is all really exciting news, uh, although I'm worried about this this other part of the rumor that had to do with her maybe getting lost in whatever they're calling the microverse, the right. quantum world. Right. Um, I don't know if that will come to pass, if she's going to be lost for 20 years before she comes back out and rejoins the modern Marvel universe. Yeah, like the Wasp is already kind of, they're using that already as like, a, oh, whenever we lose somebody, they're in the microverse and let's pull them out. I don't know, I'm hoping that they don't do that because that's convenient for Ant-Man and the Wasp and the backstory with the original Pims. So what are your thoughts, Robert? Well, I mean, as a kid, the mention of the Kree Scroll War, which was mentioned a lot, uh, I just love that. I mean, I, plus, I don't know why, but when I was a kid, both the Kree and the Skrulls are great names for alien races, mm -hmm. and they never disappointed. Whenever there was, like, there's the Super Skrull. Mm -hmm. Who didn't love the Super Skrull? I mean, recreate, I love the Super Skrull. Um, so the idea that they're going to touch on that, they're going to touch on the Kree Skrull conflict as part of this, at least even judging from this uh, artwork. It certainly looks that way. So again, it's it's the MCU going back to very classic elements of their 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 it, maybe not an exact translation yeah, it'll of be what happened. A Kree Scroll War. Right. Whether right. It'll, it'll be, be something the Kree Scroll War. Because they different have different question. Yeah, totally. But they have to they have to tailor these things to the to the, the cinematic universe, which is very different than the comics. Right. It just makes me I, I look it's just too bad I can't see Avengers Annual 10 <laughs> when Rogue takes her powers away. Right. I love that. I still love it. I talk, It's one of my favorite issues of comics of all time. Well, I Maybe think, they'll do an homage to it. I don't know. I think with the Kree Scrolls uh, fighting and being introduced in Captain Marvel and we're getting we're going to get a little of that setup, I can't help but feel that the Avengers 4 movie could have some of those elements to it unless they're really literally going to have Captain Marvel, the Kree Scroll War, sort of similarly to Captain America Civil War, mm. how they can take a movie and have this giant whole other movie inside of it while still introducing the main character, but all the other players are there. What are your thoughts on that? I think that w that would be an interesting way to go. Uh, like with a the first Captain Marvel movie, I figure will just be her and aliens because they're going to have enough work to right. do. And it's um, set in the like, '90s, yeah. Yeah, with uh, hopefully a couple of nice appearances or ties in Nick Fury, etc., to the wider Marvel universe. Um, but it seems likely that they'll play that conflict out there rather than saving it for a giant thing. Right. I'm curious mostly if like her, if she's just going to be shield strictly or if they're going to take advantage of one of these other observational groups. Like I don't know who owns Sword, right. the like alien response version of Shield right. um, with Abigail Brand. It came from the X-Men comics, but now right. it's part of the Marvel universe. Right. Uh, I don't know who owns. Uh, I guess they they probably don't own Alpha Flight, right? Because current. Carol has been running around with a few different outfits, like heading a version of Alpha Flight, which is an alien response department, heading a version of the Ultimates, which is sort of a looking out for alien worlds thing. All of that, though, points to this version of her, like, as a protector of Earth, focused on preventing alien invasions. All of that leads to this in a really natural way with it. Well, you brought up a doing. bunch of different things. Sword, yeah, Sword is owned by ABC Shield because they talked about Agents of Sword that okay. very much could be if they wanted to keep moving that forward, that series. The sentient or, world observation yeah, and response or, department. Or Marvel could be like, no, nah, we're taking that for the movies, figure out something else. So that's owned by Marvel proper. Um, Robert, did you want to? Well, uh, I mean, I, I look, if I was Simon Kinberg, I would have a. Uh, I would say, hey man, can you just put a shot of Lalandra's ship passing through by Captain Marvel at some point? Mm. No, they probably would never do that, but it would right. be cool because they both take place in the '90s. But I, 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 no, I agree. All of these things that we're saying, there's so much potential here. I mean, I think it's interesting because the MCU did get the Kree and the Skrull. Isn't that 
Fantastic Four. Like I think we how, talked about this that they before. can sh- they share the they scrolls, share but they can't have Super Scroll. He belongs to Fox. Right. Okay. He belongs to Fox. Now Alpha Flight's probably a Fox thing too. Because Alpha Flight is Fox, but it Fox. makes sense because now at least for the X Men, they're introducing the cosmic aspect. Alpha Flight has now introduced the cosmic aspect. So you know, do I want to see Puck? Yes. Are we going to see that version of Alpha Flight? Who knows? But I'd love to see the original one yeah. with Sasquatch. Me and too. Everybody. Snowbird. And Peter Dinklage has Shaman. to play Puck. Peter Dinklage. You're watching this. Get on Puck. That, that's a per, it's a role that you were born to play. It's an awesome role. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the third topic. We've got Miller, Millar World purchased by Netflix. Now, I always say Mark Millar. I don't know if it's Miller or Mark M- Miller, Mark Millar. I was told Millar. Okay. I have learned Millar. this several times and then forgotten, but I so, thought it was Miller. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Miller to me is Frank Miller and then other people with the M-I-L-L-E-R and M-I-L-L-A-R just feels like Millar. So I'm going to keep saying Millar until he says, you're saying my name wrong. So Mark Millar and his entire universe of series, you got Nemesis, Jupiter's Legacy, which we've talked about a lot, the kick-ass movies, Starlight, Empress, Huck, Chrononauts, Reborn, Superior, Wanted, Super Crooks, so many more. Netflix just bought his entire universe. Now Do that you is just stop and be like, what? That is insane. It's giant news. I mean, if you're not familiar with the Millar world or who Mark Millar is, I'm sure you've probably seen the movie Wanted. You've probably seen Kick Ass and now Kingsman. So th- that's all from the mind of Mark Millar and his co creators, all the artists that he works with, he, they're co creators on every property that he comes up with. So Let's start with you, Robert. What are your thoughts on Millar World and Netflix? Well, it's a stunning development that that they would invest not just in into a creator wholeheartedly, but into such a variety of actual material. You've got what would be very expensive science fiction, space-bound material. Mm-hmm. Then you've got Earth-bound superheroic stuff. Then what about the things that have already been made? Like, do they not own the rights to kick ass? And they do they not own the rights to wanted? I mean, right. you could redo. The Wanted movie bears no resemblance to the Wanted nothing like comic. It, yeah. But the idea of a world of supervillains, you know, excites me. Yes. And uh, I, I would love to see this, how it's all going to tie together, and what does it mean for their MCU titles? I right. mean, are they going to go all in on this? Are they going to make three shows a year? I mean, it's a pretty huge vote of confidence for one creator. Well, I was going to say, uh, Millar. I mean, his universes, all the, all of his comics, don't all. They're all not. They're all not tied together. No. In the same Will universe. they be now? I hope not. I actually love my, one of my favorites, and I've been talking about since day one on Heroes. I think the very first episode we did, we covered Nemesis, and that's, that's right. I've been waiting to see that now for years, and to hear that. That is now in the pawns, in the, the sweaty palms of, of Netflix. That's amazing. That means that movie is either going to be a series or a giant film. I feel like, how would how will Kick-Ass be handled? So we know Kingsman is kind of tied up a little bit right now. So even though Kingsman is part of Mil- Mil- Millar World, I don't think that comes with Netflix because that's tied up. But. What I read this morning, and this is evolving news, so I may or may not have got my sources right, but what I read this morning is basically Netflix has everything except for Kick-Ass and Kingsman, which are still involved in other deals. Got it. Now, I'm sure that those deals are between Miller World and other entities, right. and Netflix just bought Miller World. So what does the future hold? Who knows? But right. they, they own the company now, which is the part that's crazy to me is Netflix owns a comic book company. Wow. Did any in 1999 did anyone see this coming? Wow. No. Like, no. This is it's crazy. Um so what's inter- I I'm very curious in that side of it like the creative what does this mean for those things moving forward? As you've said most Miller World books are self-contained. Right. Uh and that has been one of the big appeals is that he can get the best artists in the universe because they share ownership. I don't know if that's still true. Right. Who owns the books going forward? Are they still going to have the image bug on them right. standing for creator on comics? I don't know. But is this a really cool announcement for a dude who's poured years of his life into making comics yeah yeah it is. yeah it's really yeah. great i feel like the some of those things you you touched on are incredibly important especially for this show which is all about comic books and comic book movies and tv shows they start with a comic book netflix has to handle this properly they can't just be like we own everything and no one gets rights or it, like i like the way they own netflix netflix owns netflix and the way they're doing their distribution model is amazing but going backwards working 
you know, integrating it backwards, how is that going to work? Like, I, I, I mean, I'm glad I'm, I can't wait to see what's going to happen with image. How, how are these, the shares going to be like, these are creator owned books and that's very important. So Netflix, now that what you're is looking it, at image, are you, are you shopping for anything else? Like, right. what are you doing? Well, I'm so it, excited. But what does it mean for his work moving forward as well as a comic creator? Do right. they have first rights of refusal or first look rights at any of his comic books? Probably. Or are they going to start publishing? Uh, that's what Amy was bringing up. It's like, is it going to continue to go through? Is is Netflix going to become a comic? But who publisher? owns? Like, I'm curious is if, like, a studio, if a studio has a first look deal with a writer or a director, right? You have to submit their project, your project, to that studio first, and right. then they have right of first refusal. Right. Then you can shop it around to other people. Yeah. Are they going to allow him to do that? Uh, no, that's what I'm curious. I don't think so. They just bought his universe. So they I don't think his he's, company. Yeah, like, his he's company. been publishing all his books through Miller of, World of, for of years course, now. Of like, course, but does that mean if he wants to write a new comic, do they just own it? Yep, I think they do. I think probably sitting on a big giant bag of money like like six or seven homes deep where he's like yeah anything i come up with oh. netflix is going to be making so if we can also shout this out in his statement he talked about that like this deal which i assume is a pretty nice one for him uh is going to lead to the forthcoming announcement of some kind of charity initiative this fall which is aimed at the town he grew up in in scotland and revitalizing parts of it the wow. details aren't out yet wow but like that's what he's doing well, with the money he Mark just got Millar, handed from you are awesome congratulations we look forward to i can't wait to see nemesis and jupiter's legacy those are my two favorites that you've done we're all big fans so that i think that's great news the like best way to rock out a monday uh you've been watching uh, collider heroes let me thank my guests robert where can people find you online well thanks this was a great uh episode um you can find me at burnett rm on twitter you can find me at rm burnett uh on uh what is that instagram or on facebook <laughs> robert meyer burnett and keep telling me you're not a russian hot bot i very much appreciate those and <laughs> as many messages as i get it always makes me laugh amy dallin where can we find you online you can find me on twitter and instagram at enthusiamy and you guys can find me just on twitter and instagram just at john schnapp and look for a later episode of comic book shopping this week with frank miller the man the myth the legend i'll see you guys tomorrow Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.